Welcome back. It's the time again. It's your boy Akila Roden Jr. And I'm here with the lovely ladies. I'm to my left. Bay Holloway, you and, know. And to my right. Amanda Michelle. Oh, nice to have you. As you guys can see, I'm the only guy today. So hopefully we keep it uh, 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 because I don't want to get overwhelmed. But you know what? So much has happened in the last week. It's, it's, I think it's so much worthy of discussion. I really don't even know where to begin. So on my heart right now is the peaceful revolt against the cruel and oppressive government that has happened and unnecessary evil and bloodshed being referred to the Sudan Massacre. What I want to know is all this that's happening in Sudan, it has not really been addressed on social media coverage. Without Twitter, I don't even think we would even know about what's going on in Sudan or the revolt taking place. And from my understanding, the Sudanese government is calling control media outlets are blocking all Internet access, um, which is scary to me because I don't even go to people's house that don't have Wi-Fi. Babe, can you tell us more? She actually had an interview with a 16-year-old Sudanese activist in London who was using her voice to inform the world of the atrocities occurring in her country. Let's take a look at Babe's interview with Zara Musa. Even the people that we did have contact with for the first couple of days, they've gone off. Like, now it's just she only international calls. Umar Bashir and the other person he tried to appoint as president were taken down over like a three day period in April. The the ruling was then given to Burhan temporarily as part of a transition transitional military council. Mm-hmm. And since then there have been negotiations between the military council and the protesters and good conclusions were being came to but as a result of the pres- the current president visiting Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and UAE and receiving funds and different ideas, the massacre did occur. The location of the sit-in was the military HQ in Sudan. It was given to the protesters by the Transitional Military Council. It was allowed for them to protest there. And they were, the day before, the Sudanese army had all of their guns removed from them. They didn't have any forms of, you know, defense or anything. And they were just literally shot great people were thrown into the river Nile. people are still being held there's thousands and thousands of people who are missing children were raped doctors were raped women were raped men were raped it was over 40 corpses found in the nile um, yeah there's there's more just bear in mind that these people had rocks tied to their feet so there's there's probably still some at the bottom you know you got to keep that in mind it's just and at least 40 people. was was un- like yeah. risen and that, that, that in itself is an, is an astounding number like so that's 40 lives taken that's crazy so um now in reference to um the the transition you 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 said that there were actually there was no type of civil war that was taken place there was no civil war because civil war requires two different parties to be you know against one another to have an issue with one another in order for that to finish there has to be a reconciliation as far as i'm concerned we are currently being terrorized by this transitional military council and we've been deceived by this council we've been made to believe that this is a council that we can trust and we can put our thoughts and views into and put our hope into and then we've been deceived by them in the worst possible way 10 different soldiers raped a six-year-old inside a mosque in front of her parents actually in this massacre, we had we have cases where uh, if someone tries to intervene when a girl is being raped, they will be raped themselves. The Sudanese army is with the Sudanese protesters. Like the people that are coming in and they're doing these shootings and they're doing these killings, they are not Sudanese people. You know, they are people that have been collected from Chad. Their soldiers being given by the UAE and Saudi, but these are all people that have been brainwashed, and they're literally so loyal to Ahmed Bashir. Hi, my name is Zara, and I'm watching Young Voices Making Choices. So um, for our full live interview, it will be posted tonight. Um, Zara Musa is a current resident of London, but she was born and raised in Sudan. Um, she also informed us to let us know how we can make a difference and actually help. Call your member of Congress. You can call 202 3121 State your zip code. When connected, tell them that you want to support helping the people of Sudan or send them George Clooney's essay. And you can use resist bot to text your member of Congress. In order to do that, you can text resist to 50409 and it will help you contact your elected officials and help the people of Sudan. Thank you so much, babe. Oh, wow. Uh, that girl is really on fire. Listen, she is young, intelligent, and she is a voice for such a time as this. Well, speaking of fire, 
Look, it's really heating up out here in L.A. I mean, child. Y'all been hot. Baby, we beg for this heat, and now it's this hot is, I don't know what. Well, you know, California um, people, y'all don't be having no A.C. out here. I don't know what it is. No central air. Like <laughs> Lancaster, Palmdale. It ain't in the hood, nah. Ain't no. Long Beach, <laughs> they don't have no. Nah, unless you got, like, a high-end we apartment. We used to air, not fans. I'm like, from the South. Right? Oh, from the South. I'm from the South. We, we got, from yeah, I'm from the South. North oh, Carolina. Well, yeah. let me... I went to school in the South. Does that count? No. That, no. 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 It right. no. I guess not. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> it's heating up so much in L.A. right now that people are actually trying to hurry up and get to the beach, catch a breeze, or even looking for cheap flights out to the islands, to the Caribbean, to Hawaii, to Jamaica, wherever they can to just catch a breeze. Well, just as long as that wind don't blow you towards Cancun, Fiji, or the Dominican Republic. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, everybody want to be flewed out. All right. Yeah, you don't be come back. Out. No. But <laughs> according to recent <laughs> headlines, um, we should be concerned about traveling to these places um it appears that it to be seems to be open season on our current tourists as you can see don't not don't look at me like that but <laughs> it's true in the last year on what can be technically referred as to foreign soils at least 16 americans have been murdered or have died under their questionable circumstances so if you recall last year and the state department issued travel advisory warning against american citizens going to mexico to exercise caution in specific states including the cancun area now over there you can kind of see you know where um the travel advisories were so um, our tourists are being robbed, kidnapped, sexually assaulted, and even murdered. And in fact, in 2018, eight travelers were found dead in Cancun from gunshot wounds. Mm-hmm. And so far as this year, more than one dozen people have been killed in shootings that have occurred at beach resorts. <clears throat> On vacation. Oof, look at that. <laughs> in Mexico's tourist hotspots, as of we see. In addition, it was reported in USA Today that almost 200 tourists have become sick seriously injured or in some cases have died um, after drinking small amounts of alcohol at an all-inclusive resort throughout Mexico. So is it safe to travel in Mexico in 2019? Absolutely not. Uh, I'm kind of I mean, scared. I went... I went to I got a cruise plan in Ensenada the end of this year, and I'm like, we might, have to, we might have to stay on the boat. I right? took a one day trip to Mexico and Tijuana, and everybody was like, oh, you like, don't be scared, be scared. And it wasn't that bad, but, you know, we want to actually be, you know, you want to come back. Yeah, that part, that part. <laughs> well, Definitely. Listen, not only this happened in Mexico, and, you know, we try to go somewhere where people look a little more like us. It's also blowing my mind. This is not only happening in Mexico, but didn't the six American tours in the Dominican Republic in the Fiji after also eating and drank something, too? Like, I think we really mm-hmm. might have to rethink Hold where up. we go. <laughs> Let's just go to Africa. Hold I'll up. take Africa. Uh, uh, well, that's here. Sudan, huh? I guess not. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean countries. Now... I'm, I'm not, I don't mean to be talking about your homeland. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, let's, Pluto, let's it together. My, my bad. Uh-huh. Let me know where to go so we can go there together. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to go by myself. <laughs> Say what you want. Say I'm what cool. you want. I mean, do, I, what I always want to know is where is, um, if the America know, if America knows that we travel a lot there, they don't mm-hmm. have any embassies that have mm-hmm. different, like, you know, security or, you know, things like that. Me personally, I never want to get go to Mexico anyways because ain't nothing there that I can't see on the internet. Might want to see the the pyramids, but other than that, I'm good. I'm actually, good. Um, I just found out from the um, Sudanese girl, mm-hmm. there's actually more pyramids in Sudan than actually even in Egypt. Wow. I believe that. I believe that. Yep. I believe it's that. crazy. I knew that. No idea. I believe that. I automatically think pyramids, Egypt. Egypt, yeah. You, yeah. you got to. Gotta... Working on it. <laughs> the world. It's actually pyramids in Peru, Brazil. There's pyramids everywhere, actually. We just don't have the necessary... Um, yeah. Plenty yeah, get passport so, soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, do you think we should start? I guess how do I, how do you want to say if we go to these? What will we do if we're traveling out of the country, like to Dominican Republic, to the to the, not the islands, but these Latin Central Latin American countries and things like that? What are we supposed to do? We just stay on the boat, stay on our, our resort, or what's going? on? I feel it's like obviously not safe at the resort either. Obviously not safe at the resort. I feel like if you're traveling to a um, a foreign place, try to meet a native that you already know in America. Um, and try to, you know, because it's better to travel with people that mm-hmm. you're cool with and they know the people in the area. Um, we currently have a video in regards to, uh, traveling. Hold that thought. I see one of our, um, viewers is saying never drink the water when you go mm. out of town and don't wear expensive jewelry. So I guess you don't want to look flashy. I'm going out there looking like a bum. That's what I'm going <laughs> out there looking like. You just want to look real regular and fit in and don't look yeah. like Unless you, you pay. Cause you can hire mercenaries when you got money. Well, I don't know nothing about having money. So, yeah, yeah. Um, a couple yeah. of my homies, they got a little money. <laughs> Not they got, there yet. They got people with. Uh, is the video coming up? Do we have Do the we video? Have video coming up? Let 
Robert Wallace's family says he was in the Dominican Republic for his stepson's wedding when he quickly became sick and died shortly after drinking a scotch from the minibar at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Nearly two months later, his family still has no answers. We now know of at least five other Americans who have died in the Dominican Republic in the last year. Most recently, Miranda Shop Warner and a couple from Maryland, Edward Holmes and Cynthia Day. All three died at Bahia Principe Hotels. Preliminary autopsies released by Dominican authorities say they all had fluid in their lungs and respiratory failure. Toxicology reports have not yet been released. There is something, something dirty at the bottom of all this. Felicia Nieves' sister, Yvette Monique Sport, also died at a Bahia Principe resort. She says last year, Monique had a drink at the mini bar inside her hotel room, went to bed, and never woke up. She was 51 years of age, um, relatively healthy. No reason for her to go on vacation and just die so suddenly. Don't worry about the fear factor. Worry about the common sense factor. CBS News travel editor Peter Greenberg says people should always ask several questions of a resort before traveling to the DR, including what kind of chemicals are used to clean rooms, how often are the mini bars inspected and restocked, and how can staff ensure the drink labels at the mini bar match what's inside. When you look at the sheer number of people who are vacationing there, and then you look at the number of incidents, the numbers are overwhelmingly in your favor, but that does not prevent you, or shouldn't prevent you, from asking some basic common sense questions. The Dominican Republic is among the most popular travel destinations for U.S. tourists. Dominican officials estimate around 2 million Americans visit the island each year, and they insist it's safe. It was pretty much like a no-brainer. Marcy Hudson told us she and her boyfriend recently canceled a trip to Punta Cana. They don't really have a clear explanation as to what's happening. We're not even going to risk it. We don't want to be next. I'll take Jamaica for 300. Uh, 300? Uh, I'm just on U.S. soil. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, technically, Jamaica is U.S. soil, and so is... Mm-mm. How? Is Sway? <laughs> Isn't it? No. Oh, it's okay. Not a nah, they me not. Jamaica ain't going over there. Put me in my place. Let's nah, see nah. in my place. Nah. Puerto Rico. I'm we sorry, actually Zach. had some I'm more sorry, viewers Zach. that chimed in. Um, Anthony I. Highland said, you want to stay close to your group as possible or they will seek to separate you. Mm-hmm. Have y'all ever experienced being separated going out? Uh, I'm like, out of the country. I mean, I'm, my first time I've never been out of the country. This this year. Besides Mexico oh, for like a day. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because I live in California, so it's not like, you know, mm-hmm. hey, some more different waters and beaches and yeah. resorts, but other than that. Yeah, definitely. I play the buddy system anyway. Buddy system, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of mixed up uh, uh, that with Puerto Rico. That's why I was yeah. thinking. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's what Noemi said. When he threw the paper towels at the people yeah. after. The, wow. Not going to talk about that, so. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of the Dominican Republic, have you been keeping up with the news regarding the David Ortiz shooting? Oof. I mean, If you look into it, the story gets crazier with every update. But before we get into all that he say, she say stuff on unproven conspiracy theories, let's take a look at the actual shooting, guys. We actually have a video where it could have been the life of David Ortez taken for no reason. A man who has been such a giant in the world of baseball, such a giant to the city of Boston, going to the ground there. People overnight in in Boston and really across the country and beyond that, holding their breath for better news. Mm -hmm. We know that the bullet went through his back into his stomach. He was rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery. His father updating reporters overnight. Here's what he said. Yo, I heard some reports saying that he was supposedly dealing with one of the cartels or leaders, chicks. <laughs> and so that was retaliating? Listen. Oh, well, if you tea recall, there. that's Listen. real tea. That's the real tea. tea is how the um, one of the shooters were actually, um, like, attacked in the hospital as of this, well, as of right now, they're in the hospital. Because after they had shot um, David Ortiz, the crowd had, like, went on, like, a... Right. Attacking yeah. spree with them. Well, I mean, you got to understand, he's like one of their golden boys. He yeah. comes back and brings millions and millions of dollars back yeah. to this, you know, Which is why country. it's so questionable is who would want to actually kill David Ortiz. Like, mm-hmm. he's doing good things in the world, actually. They actually um, have six suspects that they have arrested who are actually connected to the botched assassination. And we have a photo here of those six guys. They arrested six people? Oh, that's seven. 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 That was fast. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Um, many of these suspects have actually been linked to other crimes such as robbery and conspiracies to commit murder in Reading, Pennsylvania and Clifton, New Jersey. How they, 
They all look so angry. The country, you know they what? doing what they got to do yeah, to get right. some money. <laughs> because there is still actually one suspect at large, Louis Alfredo Revis Clace. I don't trust anybody whose name there. is food. I mean, look at him. This Louis Alfredo. Look at him. Alfredo. Clace. How many cuts do you have <laughs> oh, to have in your eyebrow? Oh, they haven't caught him. No, he's still at large right now. Wow. Um, prayerfully, they catch him. So, supposedly, these seven... Um, would be assassins were going to be paid eight thousand dollars to gun down David. That's or it, Big Poppy. That's it. Eight thousand dollars. You need me. money. You need money. I mean, some girl said, "Look, man, I heard he was sleeping with some chick, and her dude was a drug dealer, so it sounds messy." Ooh, I'm just saying, y'all hey, lay in a dirty bed. Let me tell y'all something. Men go to war for their woman. You hear me? I mean, war, war. They shut the whole world down for one. A- ask Helena Troy. Yeah, ask her. Ask her what happened. You know, the whole. Yeah, okay. Most of the times they're successful in completing the missions, though. This was. Yeah, this was probably. Like, who were the hitmen that they hired? Wow, I'm like, you got this money. For $8,000, first of all, and then you didn't even really finish the job. Prayerfully, we you know, thankfully he did. Right, he need to get. Is he back in the, on soil? Is he back out here? <laughs> don't know he, yet. They don't. He, man, I, I, I would take, I'm a millionaire. I'm not taking my it. chances now. That part. Yeah. Now, speaking of being on soil, as always, our president has made headlines for a few times over the past week. Here we go. <laughs> um, we have you? listened to him threaten to force Mexico to build a wall in Levi tariffs. Yet, to the satisfaction of some and the displeasure of others, Trump has failed to deliver both. The border security standoff between Mexico and the United States ended last Friday with an agreement that does not include tariffs on vegetable, car parts, refrigerators, tequila, and other imports that would have impacted both countries. Now, in return, Mexico has agreed to implement strong measures to reduce illegal immigration coming into the U.S. from the Mexican border. Now, we all know why this agreement was reached. The American-owned business operating in Mexico that are outsourcing jobs from the U.S. could not survive the tariffs that were levied without increasing the cost of goods when sold in America. Mm. Now, in addition to Mexico, last month, the U.S. also slapped a tariff on 200 billion Chinese imports. Like 200 billion. Look at that. That's a lot. Now... With that being said, Trump has a further has further threatened to double down and raise the tariff on to three hundred billion, not two hundred, but three hundred extra billion. Where that money going from? I don't know. Uh, your, what is your opinion with the respect to the United States imposition on tariffs and foreign trade partners like Mexico and China? Look, until they start raising our wage to where it is, we need to watch tread lightly because we owe China. Everything. Do you hear me? <laughs> everything. 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 And then what I you did... wearing? It's made from everything China. Made from China. <laughs> I think the only thing is this <laughs> copper bracelet that comes directly from the motherland. By the way, um, is not made in China. But everything else made in China. So me personally, this whole scheme of import export and our long history of trade trade with China as as corrupt of a government that they can be as communists and then with Mexico, everything's business. And so yeah. me personally. This is why America hired a well. They didn't hire, but mm-hmm. they allowed a businessman to become leader of the free world for these type of reasons, such mm-hmm. as this. Now, is he a good, possibly a good businessman? I don't know. Uh, I, no, because he, he is, might be. No, he is not. No, I, he is listen, not because half of his businesses have all, all of his businesses have failed. He got well, more money he than so me. Rich. He got more because money than me. Because he had He was born with money. Oh, okay. All right. Well, like, listen. All I know is th- these. <laughs> he might special. He might not be perfect, but he knows a little something with this type of stuff. But the, his relations with Mexico, like how. How are you going to be trying to deal with trades and money with a country you don't want to, to even come and step foot in our like? He just has soil. a conflict in everything that he does. Like, he doesn't stand ten toes down on anything, I feel. I mean. Like, whatever is going to be for the benefit at that time, he's with it. Um, while President Trump is levying his war on the terrorists, others are focused on his behavior. As outlined in a Robert Mueller report, here's the picture. Um, Mueller? In, in Mueller, I'm sorry. Um, in his report, Mueller investigated 10 episodes where Trump potentially obstructed justice. Some of those events were where he fired former FBI Director James Comney and his multiple attempts to have internal gen- Attorney General Jeff Sessions take over the investigation to his affairs with Russia. All I know is you fired the leader of the FBI and then you... It, it, you doing too much firing for me, man, for these people who are... You're like, fired. You're, like, you, they literally <laughs> control the most powerful aspects of the United States. And mm-hmm. then you just firing people left and right? Like, bro, like, what's yeah. going on? Domino effect. 
Knocking all, people out. Although Mueller conducted investigation and compiled the findings, he did not make any final decision as to whether Trump obstructed justice. Attorney General William Barr, here's another photo, photo actually cleared mm-hmm. the president of any wrongdoings. This act confused legal experts and raised concerns about the entire the attorney general's credibility. Let's take a look at a video clip at Mueller presents his findings to reporters. If we had had confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. We did not, however, make a determination as to whether the president did commit a crime. The introduction to the volume two of our report explains that decision. It explains that under long-standing department policy, a president cannot be charged with a federal crime while he is in office. That is unconstitutional. Even if the charge is kept under seal and hidden from public view, that too is prohibited. The special counsel's office is part of the Department of Justice, and by regulation, it was bound by that department policy. Charging the president with a crime was therefore not an option we could consider. The department's written opinion explaining the policy makes several important points that further informed our handling of the obstruction investigation. Those points are summarized in our report, and I will describe two of them for you. First, the opinion explicitly permits the investigation of a sitting president because it is important to preserve evidence while memories are fresh and documents available. Among other things, that evidence could be used if there were co-conspirators who could be charged now. And second, the opinion says that the Constitution requires a process other than the criminal justice system to formally accuse a sitting president of wrongdoing. And beyond department policy, we were guided by principles of fairness. So basically what he's saying, Trump can give away what he want to give away with because they're not going to charge him with any federal crimes as long yeah. as he sits in office. That's a bunch of crap, man. Yeah. And I'm going to just I say, wish they would have did the same thing for, um, who was before Bush? Before Bush? Clinton? Clinton. Clinton. I wish right. They and he the same ain't thing. even really do too much. Listen. Trump out here. He just got a little sloppy toppy. I mean, well, I mean, we could talk about the prison industrial system and we can go that far back, but overall, (laughs) he didn't really do anything for us to be like, oh, impeach him. Um, And as you can imagine, many Americans want to see President Trump held accountable. They we want to have him held accountable for his recent issues with Russia over the last couple of years and other incidents of questionable legal behavior. Uh, Democrats such as Congress. Auntie Maxine Waters. Yes, Auntie. Yes, been claiming my time. Can we show her real quick what her beautiful, all of her glory looking 25? Yeah, that's oh, that. Yes. Y'all see black that? don't crack. That's that Henrietta Lacks gene. That's the gene <laughs> that most black women got that y'all don't never, like, just a superpower, right? Well, well. So um, she's committed to exhausting all measures of accountability to ensure justice as we serve life for the highest seat in our country. This is what Auntie Maxine had to yes, say. Auntie. Let us know. Tell him. And the Mueller report has helped an awful lot. People understanding things they've never heard before. Many people will never read that report. But as we go through our constitutional responsibility of doing oversight and investigation in the six committees that have that responsibility with this investigation, people are going to learn more. And I'm confident that the support for impeachment will grow. I've said you know, basically directed to the president, why don't you just resign and save us the trouble? I'm so pleased that the millennials are more and more engaged, uh, involved in politics, and have been really getting the word out about what they care about. And so I want them to take all of these candidates and ask the hard questions. I want them to vote for someone who can explain their public policy and what their platform is. The day is over for kissing babies and, you know, just waving goodbye. It's time for people to know what you stand for. Hi, I'm Maxine Waters, and I represent the 43rd Congressional District in the greater Los Angeles area. And I'm here with young voices making choices. Period. Period. Auntie Maxine strikes again. <laughs> Shout out to all black women who make sure that we're going to hold you accountable for your actions. Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> um, um, what I think, what I like about uh, Congresswoman Maxine Waters is that 
she doesn't like give up and she doesn't let her age or her reputation or where she come from stop her to speaking up. Mm-hmm. And like honestly, she spoke up against everything he stands for. Mm-hmm. Like even when they She said just resign. Yeah. Make this easier on us. Like, I'm, gonna, uh, you know, I'm not giving up. Last but... year when she when they when she said the first reclaiming my time mm-hmm. um, uh-huh. statement, I'm like they really was trying to like disrespect her. Yeah. And I'm like, what? She was I'm, like, wait a minute. Hold on, man. I was like, all right, hold on, man. Yeah. Like, you know, so shout out to Auntie Auntie I keep saying Auntie Mama. Auntie <laughs> Maxine Waters, thank you for all that you do in our community and on this the, the political, social justice, civic engagement. We thank you so much for the bottom of my heart. And shout out to Sarah Sanders for um taking herself back to the old town road, quitting as the secretary. Yeah. Um apparently um one of our uh viewers are enlightening us on how Melanie much Monroe. of a mess. Yes, Melanie Monroe, we appreciate that because she's taking her butt to the old town road. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Now, another crime worthy of notice that has been swept under the rug by officials is the unexplained death of Army veteran Everett Palmer. Here we go. Now, here we go. He was such a handsome man. Oh, my goodness. Now, according to Palmer's family, in April of 2018, the 41-year-old father of two had traveled from his home in Delaware to Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, to resolve an outstanding DUI warrant from 2016. But days later on, on April 9th, they received a call that he had died in York County Prison. When Everett Palmer arrived in Pennsylvania in 2018 to resolve the DUI, police saw a suspension on his license and he was sent to York County Prison. Now, an autopsy report from the York County Coroner's Office Mm -hmm. states that Palmer had become agitated in a cell, banging his head against the cell door, of course, and was restrained. And he was then later moved to a hospital where he was declared dead. But his family knows a little bit about the events that precipitated his death. Um, Here's his mugshot right here. Oh, my gosh. Poor man. Now, and we definitely understand, Highland, um, you are an Army vet. Um, Well, not an Army vet. You are still active. And I understand, like how much your family relies on you and how this may, you know, affect you as well. So we do want to thank you for your service. Um, The coroner's office ruled that the official cause of death was as complication following an excited state associated with methamphetamine toxicity during a physical restraint. What black person you know do meth? No, I just want to say that, no. um, <laughs> especially on that side of the uh, side of the uh, country. that part, uh, a sickle cell disorder was said to be a probable contributing factor. After that, oh. <laughs> so many reasons, and then the manner of death after that was undetermined. So they went from one thing to one thing to one thing. Now, an autopsy was dis- was dis- conducted by the family by an independent firm called Foren- Forensic Pathology Associated that is contracted with the county um, York coroner. Now, in the grief of using your loved one to tragic, unaccounted for circumstances isn't enough to drive you insane, to receive his body from the coroner's office, get this, with his heart, his throat, and his brain missing, has left the Everett Palmer's family confused, numb, heartbroken, and might just cause you to honestly lose it. Um, at least I'm sure the veteran Palmer's family is indescribably angry and that's so rightly justified, um, is demanding justice and much more deserved answers. So let's take a look at the clip, um, of what they said. I believe they destroyed his heart while tasing him. I believe they beat him so bad on his head. They damaged the brain. And I believe they choked them to death after that. And that's why they took those three organs. That's our belief. And because I believe they destroyed his heart while tasing him, I believe they beat him so bad on his head. They damaged the brain. And I believe they choked them to death after that. And that's why they took those three organs. That's our belief. And because they're not returning the organs. Yeah, so um, as... Yeah, I see one of our um, viewers said organ harvesting isn't as uncommon as we believe. And I, I actually read about I believe that, too. that. I believe that, but also, you know, considering the cause of death being brain, throat, and heart, like all of that, all of those type of damages, the fact that the toxic the organs were removed in relation to the death, I, I hear the mom a little bit more just because of the fact that they wanted to cover up 
so much so they remove those organs to try to cover up I that I feel basis. that too but then in the case of that being such a common thing it's just so questionable like what is his yeah. name? maybe they What's really the did name? keep these oh, organs because somebody said Kendrick Johnson there it is Yep. His, all his organs was gone. They found him wrapped up in, I believe, a, a carpet or a blanket on the uh, side of a basketball gym or something like oh, that. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah. And he never got any justice listen, for that. Listen, it's certain things. You know, I'm a big movie head. I love movies. They be telling the truth in some of these things, man. And honestly... Um, Christina let us know that there were protests last weekend in L.A. surrounding Chinese organ harvesting. I believe it. I, um, listen, Ugh. first off... Back what you said earlier, a sickle cell disorder. How he joined the service with a sickle cell disorder? Somebody said like, it. What? Somebody Bro, said it. I, like, I couldn't go to the Navy because I had a small hernia. And I was like, well, you told me no. That's all I that's needed it. to hear. Yeah, okay, well, that's it. Oh, okay. Well, come on. You have right, a whole lot of sickle cell. A whole sickle cell. A whole okay, sickle so, cell. Yeah. I'm talking. That, that, yeah. And he, and he didn't win the serve. Missed me, man. And then, and then just even... It just... I believe, or I feel what I the mother's saying. I just don't know. Saying, and maybe it. the mother don't want to... I just, I don't know, It's man. weird when you think about it off top, you receive a body bag with organs missing. But we don't know Somebody's the other side that. that that's a common thing, that mm-hmm. people actually, the black market when they do crazy. autopsies, but why they is keep throat, the organs though? when it's an in investigation. Y'all think they try to take his Adam's apple, maybe? It's crazy. Time. I don't, know, crazy. I don't know. I don't even want to speak on this, man. Um, me, personally, like, watch your surroundings, <laughs> travel in pairs, maybe... T- trays i don't know don't go to jail don't go to jail <laughs> i mean we black so that's I mean, kind of hard. hard but you that's know but then they sent him to prison too i'm like prison like did they say he was convicted of anything and they sent him to a prison license. you don't want a prison license. for no suspended you want a jail but we go for 24 hours anything. but you know what this is in another hours. state I, I don't know how they i don't know what their capacity and how it is in other states like that because i know out here they're not sending you to prison unless you no, somebody said i almost got oh, denied no. from the navy for my allergies <laughs> look <laughs> listen <Lord. laughs> look here now <laughs> What are the requirements of the Navy? That well, part. Not, just, what can just you not s- have? Selective service period. They're very strict nowadays. A1 Health? They, they want you to almost be be God walking around to go serve. And Look, for, I was too overweight, man, I tell you. I was too fine, so I was like, okay. Ah! <laughs> it's cool. I was too light skinned. Is that, is that so. what they literally said on a. Yeah, well, there were a few complaints Talk about my looks when I got ready to. Um, too distracting? Submit, uh-huh. Too distracting for the guys and the women stop. there as well. So, you know, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Uh, you don't believe me? I, you know what? I believe every word that you just said. Thank you. Oh, I, be, I believe that they should. Oh, oh, wait. Hold on. You guys want her to fight? Oh, no. We need to save her. She, exactly. She makes a cool. this yeah. face. I'm fragile, okay? Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> now, um, whatever it is, uh, shout out to his family. Um, we're praying for you and your time of reading. Now, on Absolutely. a better news. Well, not so better. We still Lighter note. With lighter note. Maybe. Well, I guess. I mean, it depends on who you're a fan of. Sports. There is a lot of finger pointing. Show me the pic. Finger Let's pointing to him. blame. Where is it due for Kevin Durant's recent new injury? Here is a clip of the move that took KD out. Scoops it up. Durant is down in a pocket. Is fouled. Man, Kevin Durant down grabbing. His. Right ankle area, calf, lower calf. And now a timeout called. And quickly. Now headed over to attend to Durant. And he is headed right back to the locker room. Back to Kevin Durant. And this, of course, is what you fear. If you're the Golden State Warriors and if you're Kevin Durant, you see him try to make that a move and then quickly right there. As soon as he plants, right there. Yeah. And Matt, I- I've talked to a lot of medical people, and when you describe his injury, it's um, too Let's get straight soon. to it. Outside, you can see the Toronto fans, like, literally rejoicing at someone else's physical That's pain, suffering, lost. pointing see? the finger to who to blame is blowing up social media. I feel like media. it's Drake's fault. Let's hear what uh, Charles Barkley had to say. So I blame the Warriors for KD getting hurt, and I don't care what they say about it. They shouldn't have put that man out there. And you know how I know it? Because he blew out his Achilles. Jalen Rose, Jay Williams. To put a guy who hadn't played basketball in over a month into game five of the finals and had some type of move around the day before, I don't think that's fair to that man. 
and you saw the results. It's just not fair. It's game five of the world championship. He hasn't played real basketball in a month. That's unfair to put him in that situation. And you know, and the, the proof is in the pudding, plain and simple. Yo, so um, let me get get straight to it because I have a little personal um, vendetta as far as KD, uh, KD's transition from Oklahoma to Golden State. So I don't really care for that decision. But number one, I don't think anybody deserves to be cheered and rooted after hurting themselves. Right. Um, because that is his passion. That is his love. Um, and outside of how I feel about him politically and team transfer – I would never want to see another player go down doing something that they love to do. Number mm-hmm. two, I absolutely blame Golden State yes. for clearing him. And if you know Ka- Kawhi Leonard, thing, he gets Kawhi, an outside source. outside source. He gets outside source. He should have gotten an outside it's source that paper, to review. Man. But, but the thing is, is that when you have the NBA or any sports administrative um, a doctor review yourself, the – the athlete is going to want to get out there as soon as possible. It's the job of the doctor Mm -hmm. to stop it and make sure, no, you're not allowed to go out there. The problem is, is that when you have a doctor appointed by the team, then the team is, he's going to think of personal interest instead of the interest of the player. Now, have we seen players play on different circumstances? Uh, Jordan played, I believe, in the 96 and 97 or maybe Mm -hmm. 98 finals. He had the flu. Um, I've watched Kobe pop his finger back in after dislocating, come in, drop 20. That's different because those are things that you can possibly play through. You can always wrap your finger up. But I think His the thing is, is the, the same with all of them. These guys chose to play. KD chose to play. Whether he was approved to play, he got up and walked on the court. All players and are going to choose play. to play. All exactly, players but are. I don't feel that anyone is to blame. I feel he made a poor decision and he's suffering for it, but I don't feel like it's a But if he wouldn't game. have played, then everybody would have went in on him like I they blame, did Derek Rose. Rose. They were down 3-1. If he wouldn't have he played, his team to come up. If he, w- he, if he, if he wouldn't have played, then everybody would have made fun of him like Derek Rose. And he would have just got made fun of. You see, Derek exactly. Rose came back and He six did what real champions do. They get out there and I mean, they take the pain and they put it on the court and they give their all and he'll be back. Uh, it's okay. Um, but but then it also the Achilles. I mean, come on. Yeah, and it's, also it shows it shows a side in you know how the Toronto fans responded and to see them that, like I thought uh-huh, Canadians were nice. Did. Yeah, I thought this, like, I thought uh-huh, Canada was the place did. to go. Oh, that was so, uh, at least they ain't had no guns. Well, look. nah, and 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 I, and I like and I even like how Drake has been on the sideline and acting crazy. I love that, Drake, 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 Drake need a chill pill because nah, he, nah, Did you see him try to sing that? Fan. Did you see him Spike try to sing? He was like he was singing it like he's an R&B Canadian, song. Because he can sing. He was he's singing. a comedian. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. All right. Go, Drake. Drizzy. Next. Drizzy. <laughs> Drizzy. Oh but, yeah, um, Kevin Kevin Durant, man, this, despite how I feel politically, I still respect you as a man. I still Absolutely. respect you as a player. Um, I pray for a safe recovery in your transition. It's supposedly that he's going to be out possibly all of next season. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with Achilles, that takes one to two years to get it's better. It's all good, baby. Um, and I believe, I just checked the score, uh, Toronto was up two points in the third quarter. So mm-hmm. um, go Toronto because I'm tired of Golden State winning. But that's another Let's conversation. Let's go Golden State, baby. Y'all can do it. Even like, I don't KD. care. As long as the Celtics ain't the up there, I don't care. <laughs> we don't. That's why I'm going for hours out here in Cali. Oh, but you're a Laker fan, though, right? I was a Kobe fan, actually. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Let's talk about the air. Oh, wow. (laughs) Anyways, we are in the month of June, and as always, we want to give you some important holiday facts about this month. June 14th is National Blood Donor Day. Um, You can help save a life by donating blood, by contacting your local hospital or the American Red Cross for more information. Now, um, have any of you guys donated blood before? Yeah, so I, don- that? I donated blood like one time in high school and I got me some cookies and a little certificate and I'm never able to donate again because I realized, and they weren't supposed to take that blood, they actually threw it away. I have um, microcytic anemia, it's, a, it's in the same family uh, family as like sickle cells, so my blood cells are created very, very tiny mm-hmm. um, to where a lot of my blood flow Ooh, doesn't all the way get I heard, through. I hope they didn't use that blood. Yeah, yeah, um, no, no, but, but look, I have type negative O, so... Oh, so you- I you can't. Can. At I least can, you know can. your type. I don't know my type. Yo, type negative O is really That's rare. Time. You go to the doctor. Yeah, so I can yeah. give to anybody in the world, but I only can receive from another type negative O. Yeah, it sucks. But but listen, my anemia, my my condition, it is it happens sporadically. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I can, I, they can take some, and sometimes they can't. It just depends on how. Well, I'm be I negative, am. so you be negative. Yeah. Oh, well, I can save your life. You can't save mine. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know. I'll I do donate. Why, why, I actually, have you donated more? I don't think I have. I've donated <laughs> plasma. What is the I had a friend that okay, was so, selling plasma. So when you donate plasma, it's like a part of your blood 
where your blood is composed of white blood cells and is comp composed of plasma, and then they take out the, the plasma and then put in saline solution in your, well, saline whatever in your body. I've donated plasma before. I've actually donated white blood cells before. I've been broke in L.A. pretty much. Um, <laughs> so, you donated you're a white donor. blood cells? Yeah. How do you yeah. even, how you donate white blood cells? I don't know. I what happens is that they basically um, give you an injection of um, like an immune booster uh -huh. of some sort, and then after um, it, it kind of like your body feels different. And when they take out the white blood cells, you feel so much better, basically. But um, can I say something real quick? Oh, do we have somebody? Why why are plasma centers specifically in hood areas? Well, it's very simple. Henrietta Man, Lacks. You know. Henrietta Lacks. That okay? part. Us. Plus, Low income places are more likely to give blood donations because of the fact of the need of money. Wow. Um, and not to mention, Absolutely. you know, where I donate specifically in um, a research center in Van Nuys, um, they actually don't, you know, give out to the like hospitals and things like that. They actually use it for research, so they send it across the country. And as black women, we are the most prized DNA. So Henrietta. We have Lacks, a viewer that said again. college campuses also have. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. we is, I, mean, I thought I just medical. Because because the blood, need, but because not the, the plasma. Because the need-based areas. So people who are more likely to be broke, who need the money, they need blood for shootings and stabbings and, and violent crime areas. Mm -hmm. Not saying that all hoods have violent crime areas because, you know, Nate, we, Nate, but we, we don't. I'm just messing with you. Let I'm just saying. We do. We do, we but do. I'm not trying to, you know, put um, you that stigma on us. Yeah, but no, no, I don't want to put that LA stigma. Kind of, I don't want to put that stigma on us. Yeah. Yeah. But um, in high crime areas, we are needed to. Fun you know. fact. So being a preacher, some of my friends. You're I've a preacher? Been, it's a lot. This Praise is our first Father, time. Father, I'm a woman of God. I love it. Go ahead. We just met. Let's guys. talk. Yeah, this is our first time. Yeah. This is, she, she, uh, yeah. Okay. Anyways, fun fact. So my friend um, John Tavia Walchak, I love you so much, honey. We've been friends since the ninth grade. She suffers really bad from sickle cell. Mm -hmm. She has a lot of crisis. So usually when I when I get the whiff of it, I go visit her. Right. Watch the sermon. So she told me Watch that she had to, she, the she has been getting so many transfusions over the course of her life. Yes, Pastor. That her blood actually changes type depending on how many transfusions she wow. gets. Wow. So oh, y'all know I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the doctor's office like, wait, say that again? So if she, whatever blood connects with her blood, if she needs so much of it, her blood that's now in her body becomes the blood type that she needed to, re to receive to survive. Well, I know my type now. It's the blood of Jesus. Listen, yeah, it's the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, the blood the blood of Jesus yes. the blood that can Hallelujah. shift everything oh, oh, oh. around you that can make you yes. sick, Come everything on. around yes. you that can Hallelujah. cause you pain, everything Don't around get you. Out my seat Listen now. to me. So <laughs> if the only real transfusion uh, that you so, need yes. Yes, was pastor. shed over over 2,000... Okay, listen, I'm Say sorry, y'all. I preached this last Woo! Sunday. I preached Pentecost Sunday. I preached on Monday. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just, but let him use you. Every time I hear about blood and sickle cell and transfusion... Let me use my fan. Listen, I... Yes, Pastor. I was like... Right so I'm like, John Tavis, so she was like, I was born this way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> listen, I can preach anything. I was born this way. Come on again. But now, living my life, yes. I have now become this way. Yes, and Lord, and preach. that goes to tell you that just because of who you were born as or became doesn't mean that you can be transformed by the renewing on, of your mind. mind. Yes, uh, yes. All right, hey, y'all. We that was fun. Y'all to church real quick. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> It's the blood. Ooh, wow. It's the blood it's, of the light. It's the blood. This, and listen, look at look at us four days after Pentecost having the oh, Holy it's Ghost. It's still in me, baby. I'm not it, no one-stop shop. Yes, yes Jesus. Jesus. Week, Who are you? <laughs> Come on. This is why I went to the South. This is exactly why I went to the South. Yeah, so listen. Um, please, you can help save a life by donating blood today. Now, whoa, whoa, wait. Hold on, hold on. Now, don't just be out here giving y'all blood to anybody. Like, try to, uh, you know. <laughs> Hospital. Relax. That's all Contact I'm your local hospital okay, or the American Red Cross for more information. Also, June 15th is World Elder Abuse Day. Um, here's the video, actually. Time out, time out. What? Shout out to our producer. Because yes. this woman finds every day. <laughs> I'm like, elder abuse? I got one day to add, though. <laughs> I got something to add. You got oh, to do it. I'm about to say it. Ju -ju 
J- j- we j- 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 we have okay, a video gonna, for Elder Abuse <laughs> World Elder Abuse Day to help us better understand elder abuse and its signs. Just hold on, baby. My granny would have knocked and me out. And how to prevent it from occurring. Let's see. What if I were to tell you that for every case of nursing home abuse that is reported, up to 23 go unreported? It's one of the many sad truths of elder abuse. It's a type of abuse that is insufficiently investigated by government agencies, is unrecognized, underfunded, and for many is undefined. At its core, elder abuse is any form of mistreatment that results in harm or loss to an older person. To help prevent elder abuse, we need to understand the different types of abuse and how to recognize the signs. Elder abuse can be broken down into three general categories, physical, neglect, and financial. Physical elder abuse generally results from the mishandling of patients, not properly monitoring their health conditions, or changing conditions within the standard of care, or even can be the result of sexual misconduct. Look for bruises, scratches, and a significant change in either physical or mental conditions. This abuse can come from any number of sources, another elder, nursing staff, caregiver, even a family member or friend. Sadly, this occurs more frequently than one might think. And we must be aware, vigilant, and advocate for these victims. No one wants to be forgotten or abandoned, let alone deprived of their basic human needs and dignity, which is why elder neglect can be so devastating. But the use of inappropriate physical or medical restraints like psychotropic drugs do just that. These are loved ones who have had active, robust lives and served as our life mentors. Please don't forget them. Don't just shelve them. The examples of financial abuse are numerous. This type of abuse preys on the vulnerability of our elderly loved ones. The financial abuse we usually see may come from hurried caregivers, scams, or even family members themselves. Elder abuse prevention is improving with awareness, knowledge, and action. However, more needs to be done. Learn more about elder abuse at these websites. Help take a stand. Because this isn't just a problem for people in your past and the present. If it's not stopped, it will be a problem for your future. Well, all right. Let me just say this. My grandma stays at home with my parents, and I believe I can trust them. But let me find out. Did somebody touch my grandma? It's going to be a problem. Listen, let me make this real quick. So my grandmother (laughs) recently just passed away uh, on Mother's Day, um, and we buried her May 30th. Before she passed away, she was at Centinella Hospital. Mm-hmm. And she, here come another sermon. She told <laughs> the hospital staff that she wants to see her great grandkids, which are my children. And they were like giving her a hard time. And mm-hmm. she was like, I don't want to deal with mine until I see my great grandkids. She looks up on the website and it says children are allowed to come in on Sundays between one and four. So I'm downstairs with my kids. And she then called Ray so much hell that the president of the hospital is ooh. now in her room. And I, ooh, tell her. And she, all she said was, no, 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 no. I don't like the way you're treating me mm-hmm. because your policy says that children are allowed to visit right. from one to no, three right. on Sunday. So listen, my grandma could never suffer from elderly abuse because she cussing you out, me out, everybody else out. She ain't going for it. Rest in peace, Elizabeth Cantrell. I, I miss you so much. It. Um, excuse the violence, Rev, but if anybody abused my nana, a few rounds and bombs will be dropped. Hey, you yes, know what? Exactly. I think I think everybody can catch exactly. these hands from my grandmother. Like, I hey, uh, what out of shout out? Wait, wait. So this is what we're gonna do? Oh well, let's let's make it happen. But you gotta be sick to abuse our only people. real holiday. Oh, 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 hold June. up, hold up, hold ready? up. I it's help. Coming. I fall in and I can't get out. <laughs> life alert. Hey, listen. Get your that, that's why I'm gonna be rich because somebody gonna listen. My, I'm gonna still be doing pull-ups at 75. I'm not playing with y'all. Uh, not the pastor. Not, not the listen. pastor. Hey, hey, <laughs> Methuselah lived <laughs> for over 800 years. All Speak right? to him, pastor. But listen, let's celebrate our favorite holiday. We're our only holiday yes, in the month of June. Uh, Power to the people. So if y'all don't know what Juneteenth is, pretty much, long story short, I'm not going to give y'all a whole bunch of dates. When Abraham Lincoln announced the Emancipation Proclamation that which freed the slaves. Nobody knew about it. Nobody knew. It wasn't social media at this time. And if they did know, they didn't let us know. So what happened was it took about a year or two. A lot of carpetbaggers had to go down south and free them. So in June, Come on, babe. June 16th, Show me this they, came, class. they came to Texas, which was the last slave owner, and told them, you better let them go or we're going to have some problems. And so they let us go physically, and we celebrate Juneteenth in a black. It's not a national uh, holiday. Or it should be. It, yes, it, it should be. Um, but I do believe that in black culture, it's, it, we, we celebrate it 
um, we celebrate it in all different forms of fashion. Mm-hmm. Different parks mm-hmm. shut down, different schools mm-hmm. represented because it is a time to say that we're no longer physical somebody's physical property. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't stop Jim Crow or the laws or the policies or systematic yeah. racism in the prison doesn't uh, system, but. A white a white person cannot physically own me as another human being unless you go to jail because as per the thirteenth prison Amendment. industrial system thirteenth <laughs> um, Amendment as I said don't watch go to the jail. Ne- watch Netflix documentary no. but we celebrate Juneteenth um, as being kind of free to say that we're not free a little basically bit free. really we'd like to have an additional holiday as well we'll Just celebrate like, you know, anything we yeah, really would like appreciate the know. meaning but uh it gives us something else yeah to do. oh I forgot it's June right so we went through prom season let me let y'all know in a, a little insight on African American culture um, for those who don't know the prom is at the champagne party for us yeah we go we don't even did, did you go to prom I did was it it wasn't like your champagne party was it your, was your prom like your champagne See, party? We didn't have a champagne party because we was a new either. high school. Oh. I don't even know what a champagne party is. Oh, that's like when you everybody comes to your house, they have a full blown, like not a full, like. Oh, no, no. We party, didn't have that. We didn't. Oh, Christina. Our, oh, our, 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 our video, uh, videographer had a champagne party. I see you, girl. I don't know about you. Like, I don't but know you know you, what? I mean, I've you know had a champagne party, but not a champagne party. She had the, look. I had. I, I had think everybody did. No, no, let me tell you. I, I had a hotel. Yeah, Guess right. what? Shout out to my daddy for the first time treating me like an adult. Your he dad bought, got you a hotel. Yes, he got. Well, this is what had happened. My mama gave me. No, 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 no. See, this is what hotel. happened. See, uh-huh. this is what happened. All right, now. So I was my my dad got us two different hotel rooms <laughs> because my um best friend was supposed to stay in ho- the hotel room with me, and our dates were supposed to be in the other room. What? However, <laughs> who thought? <laughs> Uh-huh. What? Your daddy, daddy knew. Your daddy, daddy knew. Your daddy was trying to like make himself like, well, if they do it, I didn't make the arrangement. My dad was just happy to get me out of the house. Listen, Let's be honest. My mom, I was 18 years old when I went to prom. My mama gave me the blue. She's like, so what you get in a hotel for? I'm looking at her like, mama, why you think? Ooh. What you get in a hotel for? You don't Ooh. need a hotel. You should be able to come home. You can go to six flags from my house. No, you I'm don't like, go home mama. after prom. I'm like, do you see my date? Look, that you was don't the even first enjoy prom. Time. You that spend the... all the prom in line waiting to take a picture. No, no I took some, I took some bomb pictures. Not when you want a popular kids. I was like, oh, baby, I was popping. No, I, I was popping, see... but look, I look like a Let's darn Disney it. princess. Okay. okay. birthday. <laughs> December. What? December no, what? December what? 17. A 21st. Sagittarius. Oh, uh, okay. All right. <laughs> That's well, all the time we have. <laughs> well, everybody, look, um, it's about that time. We had an interesting hour. It's a lot of information yeah, we is. gave out. Um, shout out to my girl, Bay on, on the side. And it's the lovely Amanda. It's a pleasure to finally meet you here Thank on the you. show. Listen, mm-hmm. to all our followers, um, new followers, first followers, we want to follow you. Look on Instagram, Twitter, at Young Voices Making Choices. We have a highlight coming out uh, after the show, just to let y'all know. And then also check out our page, because we will be posting the full interview of the Sudanese woman who, well, Sudanese girl who is 16 years old. She a woman. Have, but she is a woman. Mm-hmm. She's speaking out just like a woman. Right. So for Zara, we do have a full interview with her that will be posted well soon and then we will also have a um, highlight video for you guys too yeah. so follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Young Voices MC and cool. Facebook and YouTube at Young Voices Making Choices listen we love you guys thank you guys so much for tuning in here's my partners we see y'all next week another hour for the power ah! holla